Hi, this is Matt in the O.CAD Services office. In this video, we're going to look at how to add your subgrade components to your templates used in your corridor model. Our office receives a lot of questions about this, and we also see a lot of example files provided to us during various support requests that are just missing the subgrade components that should be there. So we'll start with a little background information, and then we'll show a short how-to demo. Section 1310.2 of L D Volume 3 for the cross-section format has always stated that surface, base, and sub-base courses of the proposed pavement are not shown on our cross-sections and our plans. This has not changed because of Open Roads Designer. The GeoPack criteria used to draw the pavement buildup like shown on the top screenshot with the pavement layers as defined in that criteria. Then for the plans production, the buildup levels will be turned off to only show the subgrade and the finished grade lines like on the bottom example. Here we've zoomed into a section created by the GeoPack criteria, and the criteria would draw four main things. The pavement buildup, the subgrade in cyan, the finished grade line, and then the finished grade seating line, which is the section above the base course stepping, and otherwise there would end up being a uh, kind of a random or straight line there if we didn't have this subgrade seated line or component, which is what we're currently missing in our open roads templates. So there was also then needed to have a, a nice clean line between our subgrade and finished grade so that GeoPack could have uh, computed the earthwork calculations for us as well. So what we're trying to do is mimic what we were creating with our GeoPack criteria files within our open roads um, template libraries. So in Open Roads Designer, typical cross-section looks like this, but it's almost always missing the subgrade components. Now, we've debated about adding the subgrade component to the ODOT template uh, components that are delivered in the workspace within the ITL, um, but there's almost always a step or two that's going to require some user interaction to, to kind of make that template complete. Um, so we've all, we felt like this could also cause some more confusion. So for now, the expectation is that the designer is to add the subgrade component to their template. So to do this, there are two component feature definitions should, that should be used, as well as several point feature definitions to be used. So let's take a look at a demo of how we can add this to an existing template or a template that we're just creating. So here I'm going to go in, I'm going to look at my dynamic settings, and I'm just showing here that there are several point names that are available by default that you can choose from a list. Uh, if you want to start with those as seed names, uh, and then there also are point feature definitions under the modeling template, pay, template points subgrade folder, and those are the ones that were listed on a previous slide. So you can choose those from a list if you want to build them. In this example, I'm going to constrain my component to the points that are already here. You could create new components and then constrain them horizontally and vertically to the others as well. So here I'll create a new constrained component, and then I'm also going to select a um, the subgrade feature definition for my component, and I'm going to give it a name here of right subgrade lane 1. And I'm going to snap it to the edge of shoulder point for that subgrade, um, and then I'll finish that component. And I'm doing separate components for each lane or shoulder um, so that when these are turned off with different display rules that I might be using, they will also uh, mimic the same behavior as the subgrade or base layers. So then I created the one uh, component for my shoulder, and then I'm also going to create one here for the step. The, the sub waist uh, stepping here. So I'll create for the bottom, and then I'm going to go vertically straight up here, and I'm just going to pick a point at random to finish that component. And now what I want to do is, is modify how this is constrained. And or I'm first going to go ahead and modify the point name here. So I'm going to give it a sub subgrade, graded shoulder point, I did forget to select the correct feature definition here, so I would want to, head, want to make sure to go ahead and do that as well. Uh, for now, I'm going to go ahead and close that dialog. Now what I'm going to do is um, to just clean things up for the example, turn off the point names there, and I'm going to insert a point in that graded shoulder component that's there and finish that. 
And now next what I'm going to do is just show the constraints that are here and you'll see that the graded shoulder hinge point is constrained horizontally and by a slope from the edge outside edge of shoulder. And I'm going to now I'm going to go and delete that outside edge of shoulder point that's tied to the the graded shoulder. All right, now I'm going to return back to my outside subgrade point and I want to constrain that horizontally to the bottom step here. Uh, I set it to zero in this example, but if you've ever done any modeling, you, you know that you really shouldn't have that vertical face there. You probably want to set it to 0 0.0001 or something like that. So just a little bit of an offset. I'm also going to set this now with a vector offset from the outside shoulder point to the graded shoulder hinge point. And you'll see that that point now moves in line at the same slope as where that line's going to end up being. Now I'll move my graded shoulder point that I inserted here over to the top of the graded um, the subgrade line and then I merge those two points together deleting it so now I still have one constrained point and lastly I'll go in and I'll add a new component and here I'm going to use this finished grade seated component and I'll fix my name here And then I'll just snap that in using those points that already exist, and I'll finish this. So next what I want to do is go ahead and test a couple of these points just to make sure that these are going to behave the way I want. So I'll test the, the rollover point on my shoulder to see that that's working the way I would want it to work. And then I'm going to test the graded shoulder point, and I'm going to choose the, uh, I'm going to test it vertically just to watch how the subgrade point behaves. And you can see that that seated component and the subgrade point move with that vector offset where I want it to go. So now what I want to do is I also want to test the null points that are used for my display rules. And here I'm going to go and test this one horizontally for the intersection. And you'll see that my shoulder and my subgrade or my um, grading are removed when I test that point. And, but my subgrade and my seated component that I added are, are no longer, are still there. So what I need to do now is make all of those components that I just added, and I need, want to make those child components or assign them a parent component. Um, and here I'm going to use for the seated line, I'm going to use that finished grade component. And then I'm also going to use that same parent component for that outside step um, subgrade component. And then for the shoulder subgrade line, I'm going to go ahead and select the parent component as the surface course of the shoulder and hit apply. Now when I go to test that intersection null point or display rule, you can see everything turns off the way I want. And then when I test the, the, same, the null point for the driveway, the shoulder will remain, but the stepping and the grading will be removed. So that's it. Once you've done that, you can push that through your corridor or sync up your template in your corridor and you should end up with a, an example that looks like this where you'll see on the mainline road here, you'll see that cyan is the subgrade components and I've turned off the levels uh, for all the pavement stepping. And this would be my uh, 3D design model or container model in my plans production for my cross-section sheets. And I just showed, I left on the um, the intersection paving, pavement so that you could just see the difference between the two. And then you'll see the vertical face for the subgrade that goes up to the top of the finished grade. So it makes a nice clean model. And when we're done, we end up with a cross-section that should look like this. Uh, the next question that folks will ask is how to remove the annotation for the pavement slopes and we'll cover that in another day but for now this is how you show or create your subgrade and your templates so that you can show a nice clean cross-section um, as you see here and here are just a couple links for uh, support from our office you can look at our bentley communities page and a link to our cad support request form